Chapter 11, The Lifeguard Story. There were few bathers on the beach, and the lifeguard was not in sight. In the distance, Holly and Sue could see their mother coming, but now the little strip of sand was almost covered with water. We'll have to run through the waves, Holly said. No, no, I'm afraid, Sue cried. Don't leave me. Holly did not know what to do. She could not leave her little sister alone, but she must think of a way to get back to the beach. An idea suddenly came to Holly. I'll piggyback you, Sue, she offered and bent down. Sue climbed up. Then Holly started to walk through the water, but it was much deeper than she had thought. Fearful, she turned back to the higher spot. Sue was terribly frightened now. She clung to her sister and began to cry. Just then, Holly saw a boat not far away. A girl was rowing it. Holly jumped up and down, waving her hands frantically. The girl rowed faster. Suddenly, Holly exclaimed joyously, Sue, it's Rachel! In a moment, she pulled up alongside them. Holly helped Sue into the boat and then jumped in after her. Oh, Rachel, you're wonderful, Holly said. I was terribly scared, Sue added. It's a lucky thing I decided to row in this direction, Rachel declared as she turned the boat toward the shore. Holly and Sue were astonished at the way she could keep it from upsetting in the waves. Finally, they came to the beach and the three girls hopped out. Then Holly helped Rachel pull the rowboat high up on the sand. Mrs. Hollister rushed up to them. Holly told the story of their rescue to her mother, who was amazed to learn that the lifeguard was not around. At this moment, he came running back to the beach and explained that a woman bather had taken ill and he'd rushed her to a doctor in his car. I'm glad your girls are safe, he said, after hearing the story and praised Rachel for bringing them in. He introduced himself as Bill Brown and asked who the Hollisters were and where they were staying. When he heard they were relatives of the cartoonist, he said, I enjoy Russ's drawings. Wouldn't miss looking them up in the papers. He's hoping to get some sketches of the old pirate ship, The Mystery, when Mr. Ruffley hauls her up, I hear. Yes, said Holly, only we think maybe we'll find it in a different place. Really, Bill Brown said, smiling. Have you some secret information? We found an emerald that might have been part of the pirate's treasure, Holly replied, and it wasn't near the river. By this time, the other Hollister children had come up and met the lifeguard. Pam asked him if he knew the true story of the mystery. There are all sorts of tales about it, Bill Brown said. The most likely one is this. One winter, over a hundred years ago, the pirates were being chased by a government vessel and ran in here to hide. It foundered on a sandbar somewhere on the beach. Just like in our pirate play, Pam said excitedly and told him briefly about it. Then Bill went on. Just as the mystery hit the sandbar, a blizzard came up. It lasted two days and wrecked the ship. Only one man escaped alive, but he was found wandering on the beach out of his mind and died shortly afterward. When the weather cleared, the mystery was gone. And nobody knows where? Pete asked. No, some folks around here even say she was a ghost ship and never did exist, Bill Brown answered. My own idea is that part of it washed out to sea and the rest is buried under the sand here. Well, if you children find it, I hope you'll locate the treasure. The lifeguard said goodbye and walked off down the beach. Rachel also left, but promised to be over early in the morning to go treasure hunting with her new friends. When the Hollisters reached the house, Ricky, who was in the lead, suddenly gave a whoop. Who took my jar of periwinkles, he demanded. Everyone stared. There was no doubt about it. The jar was gone from the spot where it had stood in the corner of the porch. I didn't touch it, said Pete. Nor I, Pam added. When the others also said they had not touched the jar, Ricky asked his father and Uncle Russ. Neither of them had moved the periwinkles. Then somebody stole my periwinkles, Ricky declared. 
Uncle Russ felt sorry for him and asked if he and Pete would like to go aquaplaning the next morning. I have a friend who owns a small motorboat and he often takes people out on the river or the ocean, he said. It sounds keen, Pete grinned. I've never stood on an aquaplane and been pulled along the water. His uncle made a date to meet Mr. Trask at 11 o'clock. When they reached the pier, the jolly skipper was all ready for them. Uncle Russ showed his nephews how to slip their feet into the loops on the beginner's planes and how to hold the ropes. Ricky, do you want to try it first? Mr. Trask asked. Oh yes, the boy said eagerly. The boat started off with Ricky holding on tight as the plane skimmed along the water. Then suddenly Ricky lost his balance. Off he went. Mr. Trask picked him up and they came back to the dock. Pete was next. Since he was used to water skiing, the boy was able to stay on the aquaplane for a long time. Finally, Mr. Trask signaled that he was going to turn around. Poor Pete was not ready for this. Suddenly, his left foot came out of the strap. He lost his balance and went over. To the boy's dismay, his right foot did not pull out of the strap. He hit the water with a smack and was dragged through it at a fast clip. Mr. Trask looked back and was horrified to see what had happened. He did not dare stop for fear Pete would hit the boat and be injured. And if he cut the speed too slowly, the boy might drown. Fate stepped in. Pete's foot suddenly came out of the strap. He was free. It seemed to Pete as if he could not breathe, but he managed to turn on his back and stay afloat until Mr. Trask swerved his boat around and steered alongside the boy. He reached down and hoisted him aboard. That was a close one, Mr. Trask declared. Are you all right? Oh, sure, Pete answered, but he was very quiet during the ride to the dock. Uncle Russ and Ricky were mighty glad to see him and glad to learn he had not been injured or swallowed a lot of briny water. We'd better go home, Uncle Russ said, so you can rest, Pete. When they reached the house, the brothers learned that Pam and Rachel had gone off to hunt again for a clue to the mystery. Right now, the two girls were inspecting a sand dune, which Rachel had never noticed. One section of it was yellowish in color. I think this is ochre colored clay and it makes pretty pottery, Rachel said. I'm sure my grandmother would love to have some. Then let's get it now, Pam suggested. There's an old paper bag over by those bushes. As she went for it, Rachel said, the cleanest clay's up top, let's get that. The dune was very steep at this point, so the girls had to climb up slowly. They finally made it and started to scoop up the pretty clay. I wonder why nobody ever found this clay before, Pam asked, putting some of it into the bag. Probably because the wind just uncovered it, Rachel answered. Wind does funny things to sand. Sometimes it blows so hard, one dune will get much higher in a little while, and another one get lower. Then there's no telling what might have happened to the mystery, Pam reflected. It could have been completely covered in a short time. That's right, Rachel agreed. And a big storm with a lot of wind might uncover it, too. Wouldn't that be wonder? Pam never finished the sentence. For at that moment, she stepped back too far at the edge of the dune and lost her balance. She gave a little scream as she began to roll very fast down the side. Oh, she cried. Pam reached out her hands to clutch at whatever she could find to break her fall. But tufts of grass merely pulled out. She tumbled over and over, skinning her knees and scraping her arms. I mustn't hit my head on a stone, Pam told herself knowing there were some rocks at this point on the beach. All at once, her fingers touched a piece of wood, which stuck up a few inches in the slope of the dune. She grabbed for it. The stick stopped her for a moment, then it pulled out, and she tumbled farther down. Reaching the bottom of the dune, still holding on to the strange stick, Pam gazed at it in amazement. Rachel, she cried out, this is part of an old oar and it has letters on it, M-Y-S. Do you suppose it could be from the pirate ship Mystery? 